Hello, in this video we're going to drive the mean, the variance, the mode of a half normal distribution. And if y is equal to the absolute value of x, where x is normally distributed with mean 0 and variance sigma squared, then y is distributed with what's called a half normal distribution with parameter sigma squared. And pictorially it's this. If we have a normal distribution with some variance sigma squared and we take the absolute value this part on the negative region gets folded to the right side so this piece is added to this and that's why it jumps up by two and of course comes down like that now let's first drive the PDF for this so let's let X be normal zero sigma squared let Y equal the absolute value of X and note that absolute value is not a one-to-one -one function. So what we have to do is create regions where they are one-to-one, -one, and then we end up adding those together. And so if we focus on region one, and then region two, each of those regions is a one-to-one -one function from X to Y. So in region one, I'm gonna call it Y1 equals X, the Jacobian is just 1. In region 2, y is equal to minus x, right? Because the x's are negative. So if we take the negative of it, it creates a positive number. And the Jacobian is 1. The absolute value of the Jacobian is 1. So the density for y is really region 1, you know, but we, we plug in x equal y here for the density of f of x, the normal distribution. And then plus, you know, region 2, so we back solve for x, and x is minus y. And then we plug those into the uh, normal distribution with variance sigma squared. And it's really, it's just carbon copies of each other, so it's two of those, then it becomes, you know, a 2 in the numerator. And then it cancels with one of those sigma squareds, and we get this. Oh, sorry about that. I was looking at the paper instead of the screen. Um, yeah, so it's it's like these are essentially the same, right? Because the negative y squared is just y squared. So we have two copies. So the coefficient's two, which then cancels with the square root of two, and we get this as the density. Now let's take the mean of it, which the expected value of y is we take y times the density. But notice here the square root of sigma squared is sigma. And here I have sigma squared. So I multiply and divide by sigma squared to get that little extra piece. And we need that in the transformation. So let's let y is equal to y squared over 2 sigma squared. And then dy is equal to y dy over sigma squared. We plug this back in. Limits of integration are from 0 to infinity still. This comes down. This is part of the dy, and we get this. To integrate this, we get negative x exponential, negative w, limits from 0 to infinity. You plug in infinity, this goes to 0. Plug in 1, it's 1, but the minus and the minus cancel, and we just get this piece out here. So this is the mean of a half-normal distribution. Now, to find the variance, it's easiest to find the second moment first. So note that y squared is equal to the absolute value of x squared, which is really just the same as that uh, x squared. So the expected value of y squared is equal to the expected value of x squared. But then this is that formula where it's the variance of x plus the mean squared. And the mean of this is 0, and that's sigma squared. So that's the expected value of y squared. So then the variance of y becomes um, is equal to the expected value of y squared minus the mean squared. And this was sigma squared. And this we derived on the first page. So sigma squared can be factored out leaving this. And that's the variance of a half normal distribution. Now to find the mode, we take the derivative of f with respect to y. So it's the derivative, and this was our density. Um, so this is a constant, 
the derivative of exponential, you get it back, and then the chain rule says take the derivative of this. Notice that this is a const positive constant, so it can be taken over. The, oh, and never zero. And this can never be zero, so you divide it over, and you're left with this. Multiply by sigma squared, multiply by one, and you get the mode is one, uh, equal to zero. And I'm going to flash back for a second, and notice if this is the shape of the half normal, that's the highest point, so it's zero. You know, at z the mode is zero. Now, a couple notes, and then we'll end the video. The first one is why is if y is equal to the absolute value of x where x is a normal with some mean and some sigma squared, then y is actually called a folded normal distribution. And I have a video called Mean and Variance of a Folded Normal Distribution, if you want to look into that. So the half normal is actually a folded normal distribution when the mean is zero, so they're related. And we're going to make use of this in, I think, one or two more videos. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.